If you didn't catch my previous video, I'm trying to use excess heat from an active compost pile to directly heat my small greenhouse. Check the description for a link to that video. It describes how, how I constructed the insulated compost chamber next to the greenhouse. In this video, I'll show you how I constructed the compost pile. Unlike an industrial scale compost, I can't rely on wood chips and manure. Instead, I just use what I have available. Uh, this is mainly leaves and coffee grounds, uh, the latter of which is courtesy of Keith's Coffee House in uh, Denver, Colorado. Thanks for your generosity. Then I'll show you how quickly the compost pile heats up and how hot it gets. So there's obviously a big question remaining. How exactly am I going to use the heat from the pile um, to heat my greenhouse? I can tell you that I've been experimenting with some simple heat exchangers and the early results are very encouraging. But to get a definitive answer to that question, uh, please tune in to part three of the series where I'll give a detailed report on the system's performance. Unfortunately, I can't easily make a compost pile out of wood chips and manure like Jean Pan or the other compost heat extraction experts. I'm stuck with leaves, but oh man, do I have a bunch of them. Neighbors are usually more than willing to donate their leaves and they often do me the favor of bagging it. But are they useful for compost? In fact, they are. I've seen some information sources that call dry leaves, quote, carbon in the compost equation. In fact, chemical analysis shows that leaves have a carbon to nitrogen or CN ratio of around 47 to one. This isn't far from the 30 to one ratio that's often recommended by the composting experts. With just a bit of additional added nitrogen, I'll show you that leaves alone can produce hot compost. One practical issue related to leaf-based compost is its texture. Specifically, as the pile cooks, the leaves collapse into a much smaller volume. You'll notice that the leaves will clump together. It's hard to get fresh air to the bacteria that digest the leaves and produce the heat, so you'll probably end up turning the compost pile more often than a pile made with wood chips. Industrial composters like the wood chips because they don't compact as much as leaves when the compost cooks. We can add a bulking agent to keep air space between the leaves, but what to use? One possibility is uh, shredded cardboard and paper, which has a more bulky texture than the leaves. The downside with the cardboard is its very high CN ratio, perhaps 300 to one. My daughter's actually doing a science fair project to answer this very question, so stay tuned. I made a video last year showing how coffee is a seemingly magical accelerator for compost piles that need a good, good kick in the pants to heat up. Check the description for a link to that video. Most coffee shops produce a huge amount of spent coffee grounds every day. In many cases, it en ends up in a landfill. But if you make friends with your local barista, you may find them very willing to give you their coffee grounds. It often helps if you bring a bucket since this makes it easier for the barista to dump the grounds. Say that your small compost pile contains 10 pounds or five kilograms of leaves. The CN ratio is about 45 to one. The CN ratio of spent coffee grounds is about 15 to one, as you can see from the research paper that I'm showing here. So if you add 10 pounds of coffee grounds to this pile of leaves, the CN ratio of the pile should rise to about 30 to one. Other composters use manure or urine-soaked animal bedding as a compost starter. I don't know about you, but I, pr I certainly prefer the smell of coffee. The experts also recommend adding some mature compost. I was able to do this because I have a large pile in my yard. I use a pitchfork to sift out the large chunks of material, leaving behind a fluffy, uh, soil-like material. As an aside, this compost looks beautiful. It's going to be a happy addition to my garden next spring. This compost mixture heats up incredibly fast. I built the pile on a relatively warm day, which, is, which was 55 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 degrees Celsius. A winter storm rolled through Colorado on day three, but it didn't stop the compost from heating up. After four days, the compost reached 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius, even though the outside temperature was only 26 degrees Fahrenheit or negative three Celsius. I wanted to close out this short video with a little scenery from the greenhouse. I pruned back my tomato plants and harvested a bowl full of ripe fruit on November 11th, 2017. We've had many days below freezing and the temperature, temperature has gone as low as uh, 20 degrees Fahrenheit or negative seven degrees Celsius. 
uh, but the greenhouse has, has stayed above freezing. In part three of this series, I'll present some quantitative data describing the performance of my compost-based uh, greenhouse heating system. Stay tuned.